Hello, uh, salut de la monde. Hello, everybody. My name is Jimmy Smith, and welcome to a key grape variety session on Pinot Noir. Uh, and this is the beginner's version. Uh, we do have another version, which is the advanced version, which is more suitable for the WSET level three and level four. This is more suitable for the WSET level one and two. So let's go through just uh, a little bit about who we are and why we're here, if you know already. My name is Jimmy Smith. I am the owner and founder of West London Wine School uh, in London in the United Kingdom. Uh, we offer a huge host of tastings and courses, including WSET and Wine Scholar Guild. I also own South London Wine School uh, and I also have a wine bar in London called Streatham Wine House. Um, that is my personal handle at the top, at Wine with Jimmy. Please, if you have any comments or questions, please get in touch. Uh, there's all of our websites to have a look at our tastings, courses and wine lists. So without further ado, let's look at Pinot Noir. Just another reminder, if you want a more advanced version, please look for the Key Grape Varieties Pinot Noir Advanced Version. So Pinot Noir is a variety which, of course, from its name will come from France. Pinot actually comes from the French Pinot, which P-I-N-E-A-U, meaning something to do with a pine. Uh, the shape of the berries, and then noir is black. Um, it is likely, therefore, that it comes from around Burgundy. There have been many other hypotheses, and the Germans and the Italians have all laid claim to it, the uh, Swiss as well, and there's quite a lot of different hypotheses, but it is very much likely that it comes from Pinot Noir with documentation going back to uh, the, the 14th century. Um, it does have many other grape names, so something we call synonyms, uh, so alternative names across the world. One of the most famous outside of France is what the Germans call it, which is Spätburgunder. Uh, so that actually means late Burgundy. Um, so that's another name you may actually come across uh, Pinot Noir if you are buying from Germany. Um, it doesn't actually act like many other black grape varieties. Pinot Noir actually acts more like a white grape in terms of its climate that it prefers. It likes cooler conditions, so cool, um, moderate, or at a maximum warm. It does not look like hot conditions. So therefore, uh, you will find it in places like northern France, for instance, in Britain, uh, in Germany, in New Zealand, uh, and so on. So it loves those, and that's to protect its freshness. It's quite a delicate style over ripen it and you will overkill Pinot Noir. Now it is not the world's most complex variety so therefore um, you will often find winemakers working with oxygen with this wine and that's through controlled oxygen with oak barrels. So you will see that a winemaker once they uh, maybe when they've crushed the grapes they will do this within an oak barrel and fermented in oak and then mature it after it's made into a wine in oak as well. And that's to add potentially more flavor complexities, but more often to develop more uh, of Pinot Noir's characters through the role of introducing oxygen, which can come through the cask. Um, it is more commonly that older oak barrels are used for Pinot Noir. If you compare this to Merlot or Cabernet Sauvignon or Syrah, they actually have a higher propensity for new oak. And that's because they're more powerful. They match with new oak flavors better. Um, and in France, you'll find that there is a hierarchy of quality. Um, and this will be actually on another presentation that we'll do in the future. But uh, for Burgundy uh, specifically, you will see that wines can be listed as a premier cru or a grand cru, which is the highest in quality. And this is from normally very historically old sites that have been producing quality wine for centuries, if not millennia. So therefore, the quality behind these tends to be exceedingly high. I don't mean that the vines are that old, because they will be replanted once they get too old, but the site has been used for a long period of time, way back to the Dark Ages with the monastic orders. So where do we find Pinot Noir in the world? It is not an easy grape to grow. It's actually quite difficult. So therefore, we don't find it in a big amounts like we would with Cabernet Sauvignon or things like Chardonnay. Um, so in France, in fact, it is the leading country for it, about 30,000 hectares. But we find it mainly in Bourgogne, Burgundy and Champagne. 
uh, for sparkling style wines. Um, outside of France, the next biggest area is the United States, specifically California and then the Pacific Northwest, that's Oregon. Um, so California is famous with Sonoma, uh, specifically Russian River Valley, and then Oregon at the bottom for Willamette Valley. And these are normally quite complex, quite powerful style Pinot Noirs. Uh, Germany um, produces Spätburgunder, remember, and it can be quite a savoury style in comparison to France. New Zealand, um, lots of parts of New Zealand produce Pinot, but Central Otago is the most famed. And then Australia, uh, and Australia will be normally around sort of Victoria, Tasmania area, where there are some more elegant styles being produced today. So what does Pinot Noir taste like? So Pinot um, is a, a wine that's quite easy to see through, so it's quite transparent. Um, so you can often see through the glass with a glass of Pinot Noir. Uh, and then its aromas and flavors will be very heavily red fruit led. So things like red cherry, strawberry, raspberry, red currant, cranberry, uh, and um, not powerful amounts of these, but elegant amounts of fresh red fruit. It can be a little bit herbaceous at times, um, but normally it will have some oak based characters like cigar or cedar, um, something along those lines. And then it develops quite quickly. It matures quite quickly. Um, so it oxidizes and it will gain things like mushrooms, forest floor, earthy, bark, these kind of characteristics with its age. OK, uh, so that is Pinot Noir. Uh, so um, its other characteristics are its acid, which tends to be quite refreshingly high. Tannins tend to be quite low, um, so quite soft and quite low on its bitterness. Alcohols are normally quite moderate um, and quite manageable. And the bodies are normally light to medium. So that is Pinot Noir. It is one of the greatest grapes in the world. It is a grape that doesn't have to try hard. So it often has an elegance and a delicacy to it. And I, I think that's why I am absolutely in love with Pinot Noir. Um, it's not over alcoholic, over intense and over powerful. They are, they are wonderfully elegant styles. So thank you so much for listening to this beginner's version of Pinot Noir. If you are interested in a more in-depth version, learning more about the history of Pinot Noir, more about the vineyard characteristics, the soils and the terroir, and then more about techniques of winemaking, please look at our Pinot Noir advanced version, which is ideal for level three and level four WSET. This version is ideal for level one and level two. I've been Jimmy Smith. Thank you so much for listening. Bye.